Good morning, Thelma Jalafers. Today is day four, Monday, February 13th. My name is Ethan, and these are my co-hosts, Helena and Kira. Please rise for the playing of O Canada. Hi, we're, we're the Wiggles. Wiggles. And today, we're going to sing the Canadian National Anthem to celebrate all things Canadian. Are you ready? Here we go. singing the Canadian anthem and we hope you did too you did so well you can join us anytime on Treehouse's YouTube channel and on the Treehouse app thanks for watching and keep wiggling Quick news, Kennygrams will be delivered on February 14th. Grade 9 STEM Experience Day participants need to hand in their field trip permission forms to Ms. Paul. They are due tomorrow. Fitness room will be open Tuesday and Wednesday this week. Sign up on Google Classroom. Library Club has till Wednesday to do drop-in service. Badminton season is coming. Badminton team, tri team tryouts are coming next week. Senior boys is... Monday is postponed due to basketball games in the gym. A correction. Senior girls are Friday, February 17th at 3.20. You are a senior if you were born in 2007, 2008, or 2009. Badminton season is coming. What about juniors? Don't worry. Junior trials will be early next month. Keep watching the announcements. If you are a junior if you were born in 2010 or 2011. Music Club, reminder that the TCS band will have a quick meeting in 10 minutes today at lunch. Um, all must attend, there will be snacks. TCS indoor soccer team, games today at 4 p.m. Westside Soccer Center. Quick meeting in the atrium right after school to organize rides. Good luck! Junior boys and junior girls basketball, reminder both teams have a home game today after school against Avalon. Please make sure you have your jersey and shorts. Junior girls starts at 4.30 and junior boys is at 5.45. TCS Basketball 3-on-3. Three three. Games continue today at lunch. Please do not enter the gym until 12.14 when the bell has rung. This is for all players and spectators. Reminder, you cannot play on another team if you are registered with a team or if you did not register to participate in the tournament. Dance Club. All dance club members, we are meeting today, Monday, from 3.15 to 4.30 p.m., new date and time, meeting in the music room, or by the music room. Choreography students, we are meeting tomorrow, Tuesday, from 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m., new date and time, meeting by room 204. Call for volunteers. If there are any students who would like to be part of a second half of lunch cleanup group, please see Ms. Kardipta today in the STEM area. We are looking for responsible students who will be willing to stay in consist consistently to tidy up lunch spaces. February is Black History Month. Did you know Hal Johnson, 1956, created Body Break, a television health show of the late 80s and early 90s? The show, the show diversity and sh that show diversity and short clips on how to live a healthy lifestyle. 
Cardinal Offishall, and Mateo Fresh West, and Julie Black brought Canada's hip hop, rap, and R&B genre to the to the world in the '90s and 2000s. Willis Reese Bowen was a homesteader and one of the first Black settlers in Amber Valley, Alberta. The home he built, Obadiah Place, is now an Alberta Alberta historic site. We would like to show a short film about Black history. Hi, my name is Celeste. I am 24 years old, born and raised in Windsor, Ontario, currently living in Ottawa. Um, I have roots in the Bahamas from both my mom and my dad's side. Uh, my mom was born and raised in the Bahamas, but her roots are in Hong Kong and China, and my dad's roots are in Haiti, so a mixed family. Um, and their families both moved to the Bahamas two generations ago. Um, I am an artist, an event curator. Um, I'm currently the project coordinator for a nonprofit called Apathy is Boring. I coordinate the RISE program through them. Um, and I'm also a creative and a very spiritual person. Um, I think growing up in a mixed race family, mostly growing up with my mom, who was a single mom, um, I've had a lot of experience kind of grappling with and navigating tough feelings, often internalized feelings of, I guess, being not enough or kind of existing um, in almost the in-between spaces. Um, so oftentimes I've turned to art, specifically music, to help me navigate um, what it feels like to belong. Um, and that has looked like listening to music and finding solace in lyrics um, and finding belonging through that, um, but also just allowing myself to be, um, allowing myself and giving myself permission to exist as my full self and not having um, to prove that I am enough, that I am black enough, that I am Chinese enough. Um, so music has really helped me grow through that process. Um, and especially as a DJ, I think part of the reason that I do DJ and that I, I take pride in holding space for folks is that I'm able to allow others to do the same, um, allow others to give themselves permission to be themselves and to feel free to dance, to experience joy. Um, so that's part of the reason why I DJ and why I love holding space for others to be joyful. Um, and to accept themselves and to allow themselves to be free in that way. So for my moments in Canadian Black history, I'm going to share the stories of three dub poets Afua Cooper, Audrey Zina Mandiela, and Lillian Allen, as well as a short history of dub poetry in Canada um, and kind of the impact that it's had on the Black Canadian arts movement more largely. Um, so the first being Afua Cooper. Afua Cooper is an educator. She's a historian, also a performing artist and a dub poet. Um, she was born in Jamaica and migrated to Toronto in the 1980s. Um, and she has been doing spoken word and dub poetry in Toronto since. So next is Audrey Zina Mandiela. Um, she is also a Jamaican-born dub poet um, and also a theater director. Um, and through her company called Be Current, um, and especially most notably through her plays um, Dark Diaspora in dub, um, and also Who Knew Granny, um, she kind of developed almost a new scene um, of dub poetry through kind of combining dub poetry and theater, um, which has been a really interesting um, kind of contribution to the dub poetry scene in Toronto. Um, and thirdly, I would love to introduce Lillian Allen. Lillian Allen is a dub poet who represents and enacts the movement of Jamaican English into her dub poetry. Um, she is also based in Toronto um, and left her hometown of Spanish Town, Jamaica, um, in the 1960s to move to New York. And then she moved to Toronto um, and has been huge in the dub poetry scene since, um, is really big on incorporating um, certain political movements and political realities of Toronto and bringing that into her poetry and allowing for her poetry to speak the realities of what's happening in Toronto in a political way, but in also a relatable way, in a way that speaks to folks through poetry. 
so dub um, originally um, kind of referred to the the other side of a record so um, there was like the the a side and the b side and the dub side was kind of the instrumental of a track um, so it would be like the background noise the background track um, to the featured song that was on the a side so the dub side kind of provided endless possibilities for folks to come onto the track and do what they wanted with it, um, make new lyrics, make new sounds. Um, so that's really where that word came from, dub, um, and the endless possibilities through that. Um, so all three of the artists that I spoke about have been integral in kind of developing new transformative spaces for dub poetry, specifically in Toronto, but also Canada more largely. Um, I think these scenes kind of operate um, at the intersections of culture, identity, um, performance as well. Kind of exploring what it means to be Black in Toronto, what it means to be Caribbean and Black and also have that longing for home um, and also kind of this longing to connect to home. Um, and yeah, the realities of being and feeling diasporic in Toronto, I think, are brought to the forefront through dub poetry in the context of Canada. The way that dub poetry is also kind of embedded with all of these cultural codes um, is also really essential to, to the form of art. Um, I think it's a really validating form of art that allows for folks to come together and really experience the emotions that are embedded in that form of art um, in a way that um, feels validating, in a way that allows for the poet to be seen, but also for whoever is listening to the dub poetry to also feel seen through that. Um, and I think in allowing it to be whatever it needs to be, but also in incorporating a lot of different forms of, of tradition and knowledges that are being recovered, it allows for a new sense of community to be formed um, and a new way of relating to be created. So I think dub poetry is really essential for building community um, and holding space for community to come together and relate to each other uh, in really deep and healing ways. When I think about healing and when I think about things like dub poetry and things like um, making music and expressing and being creative, those are all a part of this process um, of liberating ourselves and of healing. Um, and I think the more open it is and the more that we allow ourselves to come together and share that and um, do that as a collective, because doing that as an individual is extremely powerful, but imagine how much more powerful that is when folks can come together and experience that joy and experience that love as a community. Um, that's what's going to, to fuel our liberation and to, to bring us to a new point um, where we feel um, a lot more at peace. Um, so that's kind of why I think dub poetry is really special and really powerful. Um, if you'd like to learn more about dub poetry in particular, um, or the three poets I spoke about earlier, you can check out the links below um, and find more information on that. And that's a wrap for today's broadcast. Thank you for watching TCTV, the voice of your senators. Have a great day.